hello, hello everyone. Mariana uh, from Red Lab Marketing here, uh, back with Profits for Purpose. Um, and I am going to be chatting today um, with the soul home. So I am going to be inviting her in now. Hope everyone's having a, a good day. Hello, hello. All right, I just invited you in, Crystal. Request to join. Oh, there we go. Um, hmm. Why won't it let me accept you? I've never had this issue before. Okay, let's see. Hello, Amalia. Welcome, welcome. I'm inviting in my guest. Hopefully this will be, this one will work this time. Otherwise I'm going to have to restart here. Hello. Yay. <laughs> How Good are morning. you? Good morning. I am great. How are you? Good. I love that lipstick color. That's fabulous. Thank you. Thank you. I love it too. <laughs> I'm all about fun and unexpected. So there you go. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> me too. I so, hear you. So, Crystal, thank you so much for joining me today on my series, Profits for Purpose. I am so thrilled to be chatting uh, with you today. So, why don't we just dive in? Go ahead and introduce uh, introduce yourself to us and tell us um, about kind of your journey to to business ownership and what you're up to. Oh goodness! I, so I'm Crystal. <laughs> Um, I have really always wanted to be an entrepreneur ever since mm. I was little. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. My, my grandparents actually owned their own business. So oh, nice. I grew up in their shop. Like mm -hmm. I grew up in their shop in the office playing boss, you know, <laughs> like right. I, was, I was kind of always doing that. I, and I, I sort of always wanted to have my own company. I, I started well, really, I was, I always like to say I started my first company when I was like six, right? Yeah. Because <laughs> we had all the boxes in the porch and I turned mine into a hair salon and oh, cut my sister's that. hair so and then <laughs> got that shut down pretty quickly. But, <clears throat> excuse me, I've had numerous businesses over the years, just mm -hmm. trying to kind of figure it out, right? Because I wasn't, right. I wasn't ever taught how to be an entrepreneur. It was sort of like a figure it out kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, I tried a couple of different, different businesses, um, mm -hmm. product businesses, you know, what have you before I finally really found my purpose, you mm -hmm. know, like it was, I think I was kind of on my path all mm -hmm. along, you know, of, of sort of becoming and doing the work that I do now, but I just sort of had to find my way. Um, yeah. so I, you know, I, I, Interior design was another like childhood passion, mm -hmm. right? It was sort of like I was always rearranging my room and, yeah. and fixing my Barbie dream house was right. sort of, like, I didn't play Barbie. Yeah. You know, the dream house was my right. thing, right? I was right. constantly rearranging the furniture and playing. That was just my thing. I was always doing it in my own room. I was doing it for my friends. My friends would call me and Hey, as I got older, you know, uh, let, help me paint and help me do my room. And, you know, even into an adult, so I went to school to become an interior designer and um, in, in my, in my psychology class, mm -hmm. right? Gen eds, we had to write a paper, a psychology paper that was related to our field of study. Mm. Um, and everybody had to pick a unique subject. Mm. So um, at the time, feng shui had been, you know, popular in the United States for only about five or six years. Mm -hmm. So I'd heard about it, but, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I was a single mom going to school full time and working full time. I didn't have a lot of extra time. Right. <laughs> so, right. so I hadn't really studied it a lot, but it was something that intrigued me. So I, I chose feng shui for my report and um, I, I checked out every book that I ca could on the subject yeah. and was like determined that I was going to know everything about it at the end of that 11 week period. And honestly, I was more confused <laughs> when I finished the report than I was when I started because there's yeah. just, you know, so much conflicting information out there. 
But, you know, I really was like, it made sense to me, mm -hmm. this, mm -hmm. you know, this idea of how the energy flows in your space. Mm -hmm. I, I, that was sort of the other part of my, my journey, right? I'd been studying magic and manifestation mm -hmm. and sort of how that works mm -hmm. also since I was a little girl. Mm -hmm. um, and so it made sense to me, but it, I couldn't make heads or tails of what I was reading and like mm -hmm. how to make it actually work. So, uh, you know, I finished school. I sort of started implementing it in my own life, mm. right? Like not, not even on a huge scale, just how can I make my life better, right? Mm -hmm. I'm a single mom with full-time job, full-time, you know, right. full-time school. Like there just wasn't enough in, you know, anything. And not enough right. time, not enough money, <laughs> not right. enough a whole lot of things. Right. And so I was like, well, if I can make this work, you know, it will help me and my children, like it'll benefit my whole family. Um, and so I started trying to apply it mm. to my life um, and move forward a few years, right? <laughs> I'm still like, I'm into my career now and, you know, I've got my dream job and, and yeah. things are, you know, my, my life is a different place. <laughs> and, and so I started, I had just moved overseas. I had just started my dream job. Um, and they had submitted the finished design project to a client. Um, mm -hmm. We had international clients at that time, and they sent it back <laughs> saying the feng shui was all wrong. Mm. Um, and so um, my boss gathered the entire design team together and in a panic, <laughs> <laughs> like who knows anything about feng shui and who can help, right? Yeah. Because I don't know anything. I don't, and, and I was the only person to volunteer, right? Yeah. I, 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 I put my hand, I wanted to shine, right? This was yeah. my dream job. I wanted to stand out and, and be recognized for my own, you know, skills and talents and, and what have you. And, and so I was the only one to raise my hand and then, and then the imposter syndrome kicked in, mm. right? Because I'd only spent a few years studying it. And these people, I mean, they were from China. I had no idea how much, like, do they teach it in school over there? Like, I didn't know how much yeah. feng shui they knew. They knew enough to say it was wrong right. just by looking at it. And yeah. so, like, my imposter syndrome, like, what if they know more than me? I don't know that I know what I'm doing. Yeah. But, um, but I really fell in love with that process mm. of not just creating a beautiful space for them, mm. but one that's energetically aligned for yes. them to accomplish whatever their big goal is like yeah. what is the dream that they're chasing and I really fell in love with that process but like I said I didn't feel all that confident in in my mm. own skills and my own mm -hmm. knowledge just piecing it together from a bunch of books yeah um and so um I, I found a school that mm. taught feng shui I went back to school to 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 become a feng shui master and to learn more about it um and then I started taking on like clients on the side, um, mm -hmm. right? Very slowly. And eventually, I mean, this was way back when, right? I got laid off from my dream job, right? Yeah. When the 2008 recession hit, you know, mm -hmm. so that was quite some time ago, but that was really when that allowed me to go off on my own, right? Yeah. And start really working with clients and, mm -hmm. and not just doing the interior design, not just doing the feng shui, but blending it all together so that we can really design a life, not mm -hmm. just a space that they love, but a life that they love and yeah. create that whole thing together. And so, yeah, that was kind of, that was kind of the journey that got me to here anyway. <laughs> yeah, no, I love that. I mean, so first of all, there's so much there to dig into that I will follow up on, but I guess for, for my curiosity, give me like, uh, dummies version of feng, feng shui. What do I need to know? Like, I know it's about energy flow, but for someone who's maybe like new to it, or they're just learning about it. What would you say? What would, how would you describe it? Um, it is, it is about the energy flow. It's just about the energy flow in your immediate environment, right? Mm -hmm. In the space that you're in. So it's, it's true for everywhere, right? The energy right. is flowing. It just flows right. along in the air um, and it flows around like water. Right? right. And so the literal translation of feng shui is wind water. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's what it's talking about, how it flows through your space. Now, because energy is just everywhere and it's just free flowing everywhere, 
when you move into a space and when you inhabit a space, um, your being impacts the flow, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You put all your stuff down and now it's like putting rocks in the stream and now you've impacted the way it flows, the mm -hmm. speed with which it flows um, and, and how it flows, where it gets stuck, where it stagnates and what have you. And so because that energy is a, re it's a reflection of you, right? Mm -hmm. You've, you've affected it. It's, it's, it's your, it's like your river, right? Mm -hmm. Your river of, of, of whatever, of abundance of life. It's your, it's your spark of life that's flowing. Yeah. And now you, not you, not you, you, but you, all of us, yeah. we stagnate it, right? Yeah. We, we screw up the flow of just like with, you know, trying to reroute the river, right? We do that with our own energetic frequency. Mm -hmm. um, so with feng shui, what we're really doing is we're analyzing the environment mm. so that we can get a psychological imprint of the person, right? It's mm -hmm. a reflection of all that makes up who you are, mm -hmm. right? Because the things you buy yeah. are sort of a reflection of like your personality and what you right. like and what you don't like. But all of those things are a reflection of the deeper held beliefs that you have mm -hmm. about yourself. Mm -hmm. So all of that flow of energy in your space is is sort of like the, it's not just a reflection, it is right. that, but it is also sort of the driver, right? Mm -hmm. If you stagnate up the energy enough in your, your life force energy, you're going to struggle with mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. um, whereas if you free that up and you have a clean flowing river, life is going to flow easily as well. So yeah. feng shui is just a tool to be able to, to use the space that you inhabit as a mirror um, for healing um, mm -hmm. and for empowerment yeah. of you as a person, because yeah. it's your home is your castle, right? right? It's your sanctuary. It's what it is, what recharges you and what empowers you. It's where you absorb your life force. So yeah. being able to manipulate the space in a way that it does empower you instead of yeah. draining you is sort of, all of it in a nutshell, not just what feng shui is, but its purpose, I yeah. think, which is, which is important because knowing what it is doesn't really make a big difference if you don't right. understand why it matters. Yeah. Um, and so that's, that's the nutshell version. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, I love that. I think that's super helpful. And so, you know, um, when I first heard about feng shui, it was before I had ever really learned about energy or any of that. So my first response was like, like, okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but, and I will be completely honest about that, but then it, you, you start learning more about energy and, and that does make sense. And the other thing too, I think is, um, a, when you're in a place that does not energetically align with you, you know, and it feels awful. Like it just yes. like my fiance, God love him, bought this house when he was straight out of college. And I, hated it from the second that I walked in the door like the whole layout of the house didn't it was just everything about it just bothered me and we recently got out of there we sold it and it was just like ah. <laughs> right mm -hmm. so it's just it's crazy and then I think the other thing too that I'm picking up on there too is just like an acknowledgement not just like stuff is stuff but stuff is like energy and so when you have so much crap um, it is like energetically draining, right? And this is another thing I've like personally experienced. I love my mom, God love her, but she is like borderline hoarder. She hates parting with things. And it's like that emotional, it's so emotional. Like I tried to yeah. throw something away over Christmas and it was like meltdown. That it was yeah. just so anyway, just those are my just two observations on everything that you just said. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, our our clutter, our physical clutter is certainly a reflection of our mental and emotional clutter. Yeah. So yes, the hoarder thing is uh, that, that the show is, is traumatizing for yeah. sure. It's, it, it is, you do have to approach it um, the right way, really yes. like declutter. There's a right way to declutter, yeah. um, which is, you know, in a healthy way so that yes. you don't traumatize the people, right? Yes. There's a right way and a wrong way. So yeah, yeah for sure. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I, it, it can be challenging though, right? Because I think when you're, you just see it from your viewpoint, it's just like, what are you doing? <laughs> Anyway, right. Well, my, and my then we advice. have, well, and then too, we have these other things out there like the TV show hoarders yeah. or Marie Kondo, um, yeah. who are out there and promoting like decluttering is a good thing, but they are not coming at it from that healthy way. And they're, right. they're, they're making it an unhealthy thing, um, right. and making it traumatizing for people yeah. to, to do it. So yeah, then it, it's pouring poison into right. good water, right? Yes. It's, it's, yeah. I, yeah, I learned the hard way. That's not how you, <laughs> that's not how you do that. But um, anyway, we're going to make a pivot. And so <laughs> one, one way I'm hearing that you're using your business to leverage change is just by like actively, you know, improving people's like environments uh, around them. But how else are you using your business to leverage change? Well, um, this I don't. This is just coming through. <laughs> I don't know where this came from, but really, a big part of it is I think even talking at this subject, right? Consumerism is rampant, mm. right? Everywhere, yes. and it's it's ridiculous. Like I mean, our whole economy failed because we stopped buying things. Yes. Right? That's a huge sign that there is something majorly wrong with the world today. 100%. And even though, even though now I'm an interior designer, my yeah. whole business revolves around designing space. Right. It, it, it doesn't necessarily mean purchasing a whole lot of new things, but also I, I'm a big believer in, in when you are purchasing that you are, that not this disposable garbage, right? Yes. This, that culture I am adamantly opposed to, right? Yeah. And so I think putting an end to this rampant consumerism yeah. is also a big part of my business, right? We're decluttering and yeah. changing the way we look at things and, yes. and uh, belongings. And, and, yes. and so I'm making, that's a big thing for, not just for my company, but for my clients and yeah. for just the way we approach life. And yeah. the way we approach business, right? Because it's yeah. not, stop selling garbage, right? Yes. It's going to be a different way of going forward, you know, yes. like this. Um, I'm against <laughs> this influencer marketing yeah. thing when all yeah. you're doing is saying, buy, buy, buy. Like, right. come on. Your, right. your job is not providing any service to anyone. Right. Uh, like, nope. <laughs> That's like. Yeah, yeah, that's big. I guess that would be what I would say about what I'm doing with my business yeah. is bitching about everybody else's. No, I love it. How, no. you know, like, yeah. there's like capitalism gets such a bad rap, although capitalism is by far and away the best system to reward people who make change, <laughs> who make a difference. Yeah. It's just, it's been hijacked for yeah. so long for yes. just, let's just make money. And that's, yes. that's, that's not what it's about. It's about making a difference. Totally. Um, no, I love that. So, I love that mm-hmm. so much. Um, yeah, that's my big soapbox issue is that is all of that wrapped in. It, it's, it's just like that. Um, I call it the, the race to infinite growth. And it's just like the mindset that there's like a pie and we need to get as big as possible and as strong as possible. And then it like for the people at the top, but then on the other end of the spectrum, it's like the race to the bottom with just like cutting benefits and making sure people don't have access to these things and like right. all of this stuff. Right. I, I am just, a firm, yeah. I am a firm believer that if your business plan is not structured in such a way that everyone benefits from your company existing, then you just don't belong in business. Yes. All of these totally. restaurants that want to pay their wait staff, you know, $2 an hour. Sorry, you don't belong in business. Yeah. You are extorting people's bodies. Yes. For your profit. And totally. I'm, I'm against that. I'm totally. against it. Like totally down with that whole system Absolutely. of business. It's, Absolutely. It's, yep. I, Patriarchy. It's so Boo. funny. I, exactly. <laughs> I was thinking about this earlier today, um, just in terms, so I have a lot of clients who are like organization change consultants or like professional business coaches. And and one of the things I think they're dealing with a lot is just like the, that they can't recruit and retain staff. And so like, I'm writing all this copy about ways you can bet, like you can support your employees. And all I really want to say is 
treat people better and pay them right and you won't have this effing problem. <laughs> right. That right. That's that's one of the soapboxes I stand on too. With if you're going into entrepreneurship, don't be a shitty boss to yourself. Yeah. If all you've ever had is examples of shitty bosses, then you need to stop for it like and turn that around because if right. we're going to start with being shitty bosses to ourselves, like like nope <laughs> like it's it's a right. rethinking of everything that we've been taught since birth yeah right so i hear you yeah i'm up on the same soapbox preaching away <laughs> like no we are not okay with this and yeah. and yeah they i feel like those companies just don't deserve to exist yeah. and that's okay like they deserve to have people walk away because people deserve better right. than that yeah. um you know so yeah that is sort of i think what the purpose of business is right is to is to profit like like you say profit for purpose the purpose is betterment yeah. betterment of the world right and i do yeah like yeah no, i love all that um <laughs> so I, I mean i've heard some of the things you said about you know changes you want to make and and and, and you know globally just stop selling garbage really resonated with me <laughs> but is there anything else any other soapbox get up on there tell us what else you want to see changed <laughs> um oh <laughs> where are we going on this one like yeah. we can end the patriarchy which will yeah. end a whole lot of these oppressive systems yeah right um the white supremacist system which is yeah. based in religion that can go as far as like structured religions catholicism all of that is the birth of white supremacy and the right. birth of the oppression of women people of color everyone other yeah. you know other than these handful of individuals right i'm i'm here for it yes. <laughs> for all, destruction of all of it and yes. the inconvenience that it's going to cause yeah right i'm like it's going to be inconvenient but yeah. i'm okay with that that's yeah that's that's how we make change yeah Absolutely. Well, and that's a, this is the perfect transition point, which is, you know, I think it can be very overwhelming when you're talking about systems, right? Like what, it, and just like how big and how complex and it's like you can get so overwhelmed. But if you're, if you're thinking specifically, uh, you know, what would you recommend for someone who's like, I want to make change. I have no idea where to start. <laughs> start with yourself. Yeah. Mm, that's so Start yeah. with yourself because I mean, we're seeing it now. We're seeing it on a global level, the amount of trauma that is just walking around. Yeah. Puking all over everyone, right? Yeah. And just spreading it, right? Yeah. So we have to start with ourselves. We have to start with decluttering the, the mental and emotional mm -hmm. garbage that we've been stuffed full of yeah. since we were little, little people, right? Yeah. Um, and... and undo that damage yeah. right because healed people move forward to heal others yes. right? right but you can only heal others if you're willing to go deep in the work mm -hmm. for yourself um and that's the hard part right yeah. because we don't want to face it we live in this huge fake it till you make it society i hate that expression i yeah. hate it with a passion because faking it till you make it is never going to get you anywhere. You have to face yeah. it. You have to turn inward and face it and dig deep and pull out all of that garbage so that you can declutter it. Um, yeah. I mean, I talk about it all the time. We have to go through the process of, of releasing all of that so yeah. that we can heal all yeah. of those wounds um, so that we can make move forward and make the world a better place. Yeah. Um, but if we're just starting in you know if we're trying to heal it from where we are we're just going to continue spreading the damage right so you have to start you have to start with one person and that's you and you know it can spread to your house right yeah. and to your the people right. that live with you and right. then it can it can spread yeah. out from there but you you have to you have to yeah. start with yourself that's the yeah. only it's the only place you can start yeah no, and I think right. that's, I, I completely agree. And I talk about just like, you talked about so many walking traumas out there. That's exactly what it is. It's just like this, you know, we haven't talked about mental health. We haven't talked about like, you know, I think we have a culture that glorifies being right and never making mistakes and not apologizing. And so we have these people that like have all this stuff bottled up and it's them, like they are 
hurt, hurting on the inside, but they're not willing or ready to accept or acknowledge or deal with any of that. So then it turns into meltdowns at Trader Joe's. <laughs> right. And that's, but that's the society, that's the toxicity of society. Because right. even if they are ready, society won't let you. I mean, we're getting there now where it's like, oh, mental health, mental health. And everybody's talking about mental health. But at the same token, then you've got those select handful of people hijacking that and corrupting yeah. it with more toxic crap, right? Yeah. Now we've got, you know, we've got this toxic masculinity. Now we've got the toxic femininity also joining in the party. Toxic and it's like, positivity. Yeah, Don't toxic that one. positivity, right? We've got this handful of people that are just like, um, you know, and this new woke culture. Oh, you know, like. And they don't get it, right? Mm -hmm. They don't get it because they're so stuck in the toxicity of mm -hmm. it um, that they're not taking one moment to look at themselves, right? It's sort of like, it's just a continuation of what we've been dealing with for so long already with the toxicity of this patriarchal culture and the God complex that goes with it, right? Yeah. You look at all these doctors and lawyers and um, big wigs, whatever CEOs, whatever they are walking around with their God complex. Now we're just going into a whole new version of that. Like I'm woke. Right. And now it's the new God complex of the whole thing. Like it just, it, it's that. Yeah. All of that has just got to go. Yeah. Right. And we've got to get back to healthy relationships with ourselves yeah. so that we can have healthy relationships with each other. Yeah. Right. There's just, so much of it it's like swimming in a cesspool yeah just yeah. day after day after day and i think it's i mean it is it is the system it's also we've let one group of people run things for far too long and they have continually changed the rules so that they can stay in power right that's the yeah, right? like, true right? i mean yeah. when i started school the retirement age was 50 now it's 80 right and and so those same group of people like that's toxic. Yeah. Right. And, and, and not, not being willing to let other people lead. Like that's just, yeah, all of that is so in there. Yeah. No, totally. And it's just, yeah. And so it's hard to even make those shifts, right? Because every time you try to get healthy, you know, now you've got society beating at you like, nope, nope. With their, toxic positivity in their <laughs> shaming of everything that is like, mm -mm. yeah, no, I, I hear <laughs> all that for sure. Um, I guess thinking about change, are there any organizations, programs, thoughts, things that you think are, or want to promote or that you really love supporting? Um, as far as like charity organizations or, or just in, organizations making change in general, maybe businesses or could be charities or any programs that like training programs you've seen, what, what, what would you love to promote? There is, there's so many, there's so many of them out there. I have been, you know, I, I wanted to be able to even give back within my own company. Right. And I've, I've looked for a very long time for the right organization to, to mm -hmm. give my money to, especially because, I grew up in this culture of, you know, well, we only give to the church because the church is going to save all the people. Um, and we see how that worked out. So for me, there's, I had a lot of trauma even around giving mm -hmm. and, and yeah. donating and stuff. So I've tried to find the right organization mm -hmm. that, that I felt good with, with giving stuff to. Um, and so I'm more, I'm really loving charity water. Mm, okay. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah, that is an amazing, I've done work before with like, um, Habitat for Humanity, right? Yeah. I do build houses and then design right. stuff. Like yeah. it's right up my alley, but I wanted just that right, right thing. Right. So yeah. my, or me, myself and my company, both, we give to charity water just because uplifting women uplifts the world. Yeah. Um, totally. and I'm, yeah, I really believe in their cause and that and I love that 100% of the, their public donations actually go towards the cause mm. and not towards just some CEO's pocket. Yeah, bureaucracy. Um, which, <laughs> right, there's always been so much of that. So right. it took me a long time to find that, that right organization. But Charity Water, I, I really, yeah, 100% of their public donations go towards 
providing water, like, right. And, and empowering women, right. Yeah. Which empowers the whole community. So, yep. That's, that is Very the organization cool. that I team up with. Yeah. I will, make sure, <laughs> I will make sure that in the comments, um, in the show caption, we will, I will drop a link to that for anyone who wants to check it out. I'm um, so last question before we wrap up, uh, it's a surprise. I, I didn't tell you I was going to be asking it, but I always, I always give guests the opportunity to just ask me a question before, before we, before we wrap up. Ooh. Hmm. <laughs> What is your big next? Mm, that's a good question. Um, so for me, I, um, so I have a pretty small agency right now. So I, I really specialize in social media strategy, social media management, like organic social media. But what I really want to do is I really want to build a full service agency, provide a variety of things from like web design to paid ads, search engine optimization. And I think the ultimate goal being of this is that I would love uh, elevating the stories of badass businesses making the world a better place. So moving in, working with larger organizations, I really want to be able to do things like sliding scale for organization, smaller organizations or some sort of scholarship program. I just because of what we've talked about in terms of like the the like level of anger and conversations like we need to reframe the con we have to have better conversations as a society oh, so 100 <laughs> right better conversations period we yes. need to be having those for sure I'm yes with you. yeah so that's the vision that's hi the rosie <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Perfect. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, Crystal. This has been so fun chatting. I will make sure that um, I uh, let everyone know how they can get a hold of you, where they can contact you. I will leave information um, about Charity Water. And yes, thank you again for such a lovely conversation today. Ab absolutely. Can I give a free gift to your audience? Is that going to be okay? Yes. No. Yeah, of Cause course. Because we, we talked a it. bit about, thank you. Awesome. Yeah. We did talk a little bit about the deep cluttering and stuff. And um, I have my own decluttering method. It's five mm -hmm. steps to really get them started in this process of not yeah. just the physical clutter, but the mental and emotional part and getting yeah. started with that. And they can download that for free at declutteryourmindset.com. Okay. Um, and I so, will. yep, that'll get them that free download and um, get them started. Perfect. I will. I'm writing that down now. So don't forget declutteryourmindset.org. You said Dot, no, dot com. Dot com. See, that's yep. why. There we go. That's why I needed to write it down. <laughs> perfect, perfect. I will include that as well. And yes, go access her guide. I will access it too, because I'm sure I can use some help also. Um, <laughs> perfect. Well, again, thank you so much. And yes, we will uh, make sure that we share your video so folks can hear all about you and your story. Thank you. Thank you so much. This has been so much fun being here chatting with you this morning. Perfect. See ya. <laughs> thank you. Bye.